Welcome back to Med Smarter, where we take a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we begin, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Let's move on and talk about bacterial staining. So the first one we'll talk about is the most common stain that will be done, and that's a gram stain. As you can see here in this picture, this microscope slide shows us two different colors of bacteria after it's undergone a gram stain. The purple is our gram positive, as you can see uh, in the circles, and then the pink is gram negative with the rods. This occurs because of the peptidoglycan layer and the outer cell wall that are present in the gram positive and gram negative respectively. So the gram positive we stain with a crystal violet and that crystal violet stain causes it to turn purple. This is because it's embedding itself within that thick peptidoglycan layer and causing the purple color to be retained by the gram positive bacteria. We then wash that stain away and counter stain it with a pink red stain which gives it the which gives the gram negative bacteria that pink red color. It doesn't take up that original purple crystal violet stain, it takes up that pink red color counter stain. Now there also are some bacteria that won't stain well for gram positive or gram negative. These uh, bugs don't stain well below in this chart and there's a little mnemonic that we can use to help remember it. But first let's talk about those bacteria. So Trepomona and Leptospira, these are too thin. The cell wall of the bacteria is too thin for it to be stained with the gram positive or gram negative counter stain. Mycobacteria has a very high lipid content of the cell wall, which re makes it resistant to staining as well. Mycoplasma and urea plasma don't have a cell wall, so we can't stain it. And then finally, uh, these six here, Legionella, Rickettsia, Chlamydia, Bartonella, Anaplasma, and, and Ehrlichia, are intracellular organisms. Specifically with Chlamydia, it is an uh, organism that lacks a peptidoglycan layer due to its low muramic acid levels. Now there's a mnemonic that we can use to help us remember which ones don't stain well. Uh, so if you do see a picture uh, on a test and they don't show up anything, it might be because it's not gram staining well. And that gives you a, an idea that it's one of these uh, particular uh, microbacteria. So the mnemonic is these little microbes may unfortunately lack real color but are everywhere. So you can remember that and each individual word corresponds to the first letter of each bacteria. So the T is for Trepomona, the L is for Leptospira, the M is for Mycobacteria, and you can f follow it from there. So those particular ones in this chart do not gram stain well, so we cannot rely on a gram stain to give us the solution for that type of bacteria. Some more stains that we can uh, use for our microbacteria is a Gimsa stain. Gimsa stain is a nucleic acid stain that will stain Rickettsia, Chlamydia, Trypanosomes, Plasmodium, Borreliella, and Helicobacter pylori. In this picture to the side you can see this pink stain uh, with the nucleic acid Gimsa stain and this specifically is a trypanosome. It's Trypanosoma cruzi. We can remember this with the mnemonic, Ricky got chlamydia as he tried to please the bored hot geisha. So Ricky is rickettsia, chlamydia is chlamydia, the TR in tried is trypanosomes, the PL in please is plasmodium, the BO in borrelia, and then the H is helicobacter pylori. Another stain that we use is the periodic acid shift. Uh, the periodic acid shift basically works by oxidizing sugars uh, within the bacteria that will break bonds between two carbon bonds and then we can react that with the shift agent that gives us a purple or a magenta color within the specimen. So we're staining glycogen, mucopolysaccharides, and what that does is will help us diagnose things like Whipple's disease, which is Trophorema whippoli. A uh, mnemonic that we can use is pass the sugar, so PAS, periodic acid shift, and it's staining sugar, where we said we oxidize that sugar to uh, give us the ability to stain it with the shift agent. 
this particular photo over here is showing uh, esophageal candidiasis uh, using the periodic acid shift stain. We also have the Zeal Nielsen stain, uh, also known as the Carbol Fusion stain. And this works by staining every single cell with the Carbol Fusion. And then we destain it and remove away uh, all of the stain with an acid alcohol. So only the acid fast bacteria stay stained with that Carbol Fusion. So when we come in and counter stain it with that methylene blue, we get a blue background and it allows our acid fast organisms to remain that previous red from the Carbol Fusion stain. So this stains acid fast bacteria like Mycobacteria, Nocardia, and what it's going to do is it's actually specifically staining the mycolic acid in the cell wall. And then also we can stain protozoa like Cryptosporidium uh, and specifically the oocyst with a Cryptosporidium. A little side note, uh, the oramine rhodamine stain is often used more commonly for screening because it's uh, more inexpensive than the Zeal Nielsen stain uh, and it is uh, more sensitive as well. This particular photo on the right here is a staining of Mycobacterium tuberculosis that we can see using the Zeal Nielsen stain. Another stain that we use is the India ink stain. Uh, India ink stain, and we can also use mucaramine uh, to stain the thick polysaccharide capsule red uh, on top of that black background. And finally, we have silver stain. Uh, silver stain is a stain that is used to stain fungus, uh, specifically Coccidioides, Pneumocystis urevetsia, Legionella, and Helicobacter pylori. And as you see in this picture to the right, what we're seeing is the staining of histoplasmosis or histoplasma, which are those black round balls that you see inside of this liver biopsy. It's particularly useful for staining carbohydrates within the organism. Thank you.